Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, we'll talk about rocket science uh, today. Well, basically, more precisely, it will be ideal rocket equation. That's the, the real theme. Rocket science is the name of the whole topic, which probably will have some problems related to this. And it's a nice catchy name, anyway, for this topic. Um, so this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14, presented on unizor.com. If you found this lecture on, uni, uh, on YouTube, um, uh, where all my lectures actually are stored, I do suggest you still to go through the unizor.com website, because it contains basically the course, which means logically dependent on each other, um, topics presented not only in the video format but also in a textual format as well like like a textbook plus this site contains mass 14s which is a prerequisite for this course especially the calculus wise calculus is definitely needed for any kind of a physics which uh, I'm talking about so you have to be proficient um, in calculus uh, and the site is completely free by the way um, does not contain any advertisement so I do recommend you to basically take the course and uh, this particular physics 14 course is being created as we speak so right now I am ending the dynamics portion of the mechanics and then whatever other um, aspects of the course will be I will continue basically recording the lectures and providing all the textual material all right back to rocket science um, now we are talking about very ideal situation you see ideal rocket equation which means the rocket is considered to be um, flying completely freely in the space and there is only uh, stars there are only stars to provide us with um, inertial reference frame which we will use to uh, to check the speed of the of the rocket now so we are assuming ideal situation there are no gravitational fields completely empty space the rocket is moving and what's most important with the rocket movement versus movements of other um, uh, objects which we were considering before the rocket moves or propels forward accelerates because it actually takes the piece of its own mass the propellant and throws it um, if it throws in this direction it goes to this direction so basically that's what's happening and uh, if it's constantly throwing propellant towards this direction it will increase the speed in this if it's moving now if it's already moving in this direction and turns with its back with its engines towards the movement and then starts throwing the propellant it will obviously decelerate so that's how we understand the whole physics of this right so what I'm doing to, uh, right now I will try to derive certain equation which basically connects together certain characteristics of this movement so important thing is that our um, mass of the rocket is changing because it throws away the propellant which is part of its own mass so mass is a function of the time now I will consider the time interval from t begin to t end so I consider my rocket to be completely free nothing is working up until the moment t begin so there is certain speed and certain mass of the rocket at moment t begin certain speed then it turns on the engines and starts throwing the propellant with certain speed relative to rocket the speed of the propellant is constant because that's basically a characteristic of the engine how it works so there is a constant speed of uh, uh, it's called effective exhaust speed this is the speed of the of these gases or whatever it throws away um, relative to the rocket itself and it's constant obviously it's not constant relative to inertial frame obviously because the rocket itself is moving right so the speed of these gases which we are throwing 
uh, away is actually Vt plus Ve. So this is the speed in the inertial reference frame relative to which we will put all our equations. But this is the constant relative to the rocket. Now, at the moment t end, we basically turn off the engine, and then we, we see that our mass has diminished by a certain amount, because we have exhausted the propellant, but our speed is increased if we um, direct the exhaustion back in a negative direction. If we are moving to the positive direction, we are um, uh, propelling this propellant uh, backwards, the negative direction. Or, if we are propelling towards our um, movement, so we are moving in the positive direction and we are directing this also uh, in the same direction, then we will slow down, obviously. So that's how the rocket, for instance, can sit on a can land on the on the planet. It turns with its engine uh, down towards the planet, and it goes towards the planet. But the engines, if it, if they work, they slow down up until the moment when the landing actually occurs. So this is what we have. Now, why the rocket? Let, let's consider we are exhausting our um, propellant backwards. So the rocket goes this way and propellant goes the opposite direction. Why the rocket increases this, its, its speed? Well, there is a very simple law called the law of conservation of momentum. Now, what happens before and after certain period of time and I will use the infinitesimal period of time from t to t plus dt. So dt is infinitesimal increment. Again, I refer you to calculus about all these infinitesimal things, how they are working, etc. If you, if you are not familiar with this, I don't think it will be really well understood, whatever I'm going to do um, next. So this is a differential of time which is infinitesimal increment of the time. And I would like to know what happens during this infinitesimal period of time if my engines are working. So before this period of time at moment t, I have certain momentum of the entire system. And the entire system contains the rocket and certain amount of propellant in it. That was before. What happened after, at the moment, t plus dt? Well, my entire rocket is this is v of t, this is v of t plus dt, and this is propellant, which we have exhausted, and its speed was v of t plus ve. So that's what happens before and after. Now, from the, from the law of conservation of momentum, this momentum should be equal to sum of these two momentums. And that's where we get the increase of this. Because we are moving this in this direction, momentum is the, um, the vector, basically, right? So if, um, if this vector is going to this direction, now this vector should be greater than this one by absolute value, to sum be equal to this one, right? It's kind of obvious, right? So sum of these is equal to this. Similarly, if, if I have 10 here and I have minus 2 here, that's supposed to be 12, right? So the sum of these should be equal to this. So this is how we increase the speed. And this is minus because it's this direction, right? Okay. This is a nice picture, and we will basically use this picture to, um, to construct our law of conservation of momentum as an equation. Now, before, my total mass, this is a moment t. My total mass was this, and our speed was this. So this is momentum 
of the entire system at moment t. Now, we exhausted a certain amount of fuel. What happens afterward? Well, obviously we will have uh, m of t plus dt. That's the new mass, right? Mass at the moment t plus dt times v of t plus dt that's the speed of this thing so new mass which is actually smaller than this one right and new speed which is supposed to be bigger right so plus this thing now what is the mass of this what, what we have lost well we have lost m of t minus m of t plus dt that's what we have lost this is what was before the mass this is what was after so the difference between them this is bigger than this one so this difference is exactly the mass of the um, exhausted propellant and the speed we know the speed v of t plus v e and this is supposed to be equal. So this is my equation. Basically, that's it. The whole work is done, and whatever remains is just pure technicality. Now, let's just think about it. What is m of t plus dt? This is the differential of the function. It's equal to m of t plus differential of the m of t. Again, back to calculus. Why? Because differential of the, of the function is defined as the value of the function at moment t plus dt minus the value of the function at moment t. That's what differential of the function at moment t is. So, so, similarly, v of t plus dt is equal to v of t plus differential of function v of t. We got that. And what is this? Well, this is minus d m of t, right? m of t plus dt minus m of t is dt. Here we have it in reverse, because this is something which was before, and this is after exhaust, so that's smaller, and the difference is really the mass. Now, why minus here? Well, because differential is negative, so to, to make it positive, I have to make it with a minus sign, obviously, right? But uh, whatever the logic is, the definition of this is exactly minus uh, dmt. It follows from here, and this is the defini definition of differential. So there is nothing, you know, uh, very arbitrary here. This is just from the definition of the differential of the function. So let's use this and see what we have. Um, so m of t times v of t is equal to now this is this m of t plus dt plus plus differential of m of t times v of t plus differential v of t That's this piece, plus this piece. Now this is, as I was saying, it's minus differential of mt times v of t plus ve. So this is our equation, which we are going to open the parentheses. So, m of t times v of t is equal to m of t times v of t plus m of t times differential of v of t plus 
v of t times differential m of t that this and two differentials m of t v of t now minus minus v of t times this and minus v e times differential of m of t okay this is a little bit better and here is what we will do this cancels with this uh, this cancels with this now what is this back to calculus the product of two differentials one differential is an infinitesimal and another is infinitesimal so their product is infinitesimal of the higher order which we can ignore because we will integrate the whole thing to get rid of the differentials of the first order and this is differential of the second order it will be infinitesimal which we can ignore so what's the result the result is um, m of t times dv of t minus this equals to zero or we can put it this way or we can put it this way okay now this is now very very simple because this is v is a constant right what is differential of the function divided by function well it's differential of logarithm of this function again if uh, if you don't know why back to calculus <laughs> the the derivative of logarithm is one over whatever is under logarithm so it's which is 1 over mt and then we have to derive the, make a derivative from the inner function which is in this case differential all right so this is the final formula which we are going to integrate on this period because this is what happens during this interval of time infinitesimal infinite infinitesimal in, in interval of time from t to t plus dt so if i will integrate it on any time interval from beginning to end so I assume that during this period of time my engines are working they start working at this moment they end working at this moment and they are always exhausting with a constant relative to the rocket speed uh, the fuel the total amount of fuel which we have exhausted basically is during the infinitesimal uh, um, time period is is a differential of m of t but now we are integrating and we will get the total amount of fuel which we have exhausted okay so what's the differential of uh, integral of differential that's the function itself v of t and that should be v of t at the end minus v of t in the beginning so that's on the left on the right we have now v is a constant now we have um, logarithm of m of t plus um, sorry plus t end minus logarithm of um, m t beginning almost done these are all simplifications technical part only right now the the logic was finished long time ago when i derived the first equation
from the law of conservation of momentum. This is just technicality. So, what is this? This is increment of the speed. We have gained the new speed, uh, and I will put it delta V during this period from beginning to end. Now, what is this? VE. Now, the difference of logarithm is logarithm of the ratio. Remember this? So it's logarithm of um, m of t end divided by m of t beginning. But I don't like it a little bit. I'm, I'm telling you why. In the, um, so you see, mass at the end is smaller than mass at the beginning, right? Because we are exhausting certain propellants. So this ratio is less than one which means logarithm of this ratio is negative. I kind of like it to be positive, so I will change the order. It would be uh, mass in the beginning divided by mass at the end, but I will put minus in front. I like it better. Mass in the beginning, which is bigger, and that's why my logarithm is positive. And this is the final formula. Now, let me talk a little bit about this formula. <coughs> this minus is actually very important. Why we came up with the minus? Actually, in many textbooks, they, they don't really specify this because they do not um, consider the speed as a vector. But speed is a vector. So it's a velocity, actually. That's the right term. Speed is just absolute value of, um, of, of the velocity. Now, if our exhaust is directed uh, to the opposite direction than the movement, and let's assume that the movement is towards the positive um, end of some axis, of this inertial frame. So we have this inertial frame and let's say our rocket is moving along the x-axis towards the positive direction, right? Then, if I'm exhausting back, which means our VE as a vector is negative since it's directed to the negative part of the x-axis, right? So this is negative. With a minus it will be positive. Now this is positive. So this is positive. Now, what does it mean that delta V is positive? It means our speed is increasing, right? We have the positive increase, and that's our acceleration comes from. So, if we are exhausting to the back and moving to the front, then we are increasing our speed of the rocket as we are exhausting the uh, propellant. But, as I was saying before, sometimes the rocket wants to decelerate. For instance, the rocket goes down to the Earth, or planet, whatever, and it starts uh, and it turns, instead of uh, nose first, it goes the back first, and the engine start working, and the rocket moves in one direction, and the exhaust also in this direction. So exhaust is positive, because our rocket is always moving towards the positive value of the x axis. So if this is positive, then now this is negative, and that's what makes our delta negative. Because logarithm is always positive, right? And delta negative means we are decelerating. So that's why I prefer this minus to be here. It signifies actually the vector character of the movement of the uh, rocket itself and the exhaust. Uh, of the propellant uh, as, as another object. All right, this formula is um, named after uh, Russian mathematician and astronomer Tsiolkovsky, although he was not the first one who derived it. Um, there were other people, you can actually go to Wikipedia and, uh, and, and check who else, but he, deri he derived it independently and for whatever historical reason, the formula is called um, by his name, 
Tsiolkovsky. Um, well, that's basically it. I do recommend you to go to the Unisor to uh, Physics 14. It's a dynamics, mechanics, dynamics, and the rocket science. That's how you go to this topic. Um, examine the text for this lecture. I think it's very important if you will read it again. It's like a textbook, but now you're prepared for um, whatever you will be reading. And I think it's a very useful um, reading because maybe I did not, did not explain in all the details certain aspects and you will see it in front of you. Um, that probably would be really very beneficial. Um, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.